Good morning, happy hump day. Where did that cold temperature come from? Crazy. Um, today's reading I really like, even just the word peace, I feel like as a human, it's in the title, as a human, even just hearing the word peace invokes you to slow down and be more peaceful. Uh, I don't know anyone who would get angry or have a frown from hearing the word peace. Take a moment today to close your eyes and think of something that gives you a sense of deep peace and equilibrium. It's a place such as the ocean or a mountaintop, or is it a specific song that calms and quiets you? Or is it a moment like sitting quietly with a cup of tea? Connect with one thing that evokes the power of peace within you. This thing is your gateway to a peaceful state. And um, we've talked about this before, <clears throat> where you develop a mini travel journey in your head so that you can quickly go to that place. Um, say you're having your blood pressure taken at a doctor or you're getting a needle or there's stressful traffic and being able to go to a place instantaneously um, and help you recenter and ground definitely makes it easier in life. So think of that place, memorize it, and that becomes your quick go-to. The thing is your gateway to a peaceful state. Whenever you need peace, reconnect with it. Peace will always be available to you just by closing your eyes. And that's kind of a little tool you carry in your pocket. Today, I thought we would go back to the yoga game. Hey Google, turn music down. So I love this game because it quickly has us um, visit a whole bunch of poses we haven't seen in a long time. I had quite a bit of feedback the last time we did it. People were surprised that their bodies had um, lost touch with certain poses. Now, in a way, that's the perfect yoga. You're coming to that pose completely new and fresh without the muscle memory. Uh, what happens when we do things in the same way, at the same time, in the same pattern, is that um, eventually our bodies, it's too comfortable. And what happens is when your physical state is too comfortable, your brain starts spinning. If you come to a pose and the cues that I'm giving you are new, the sensations in your body are unfamiliar, it forces you to be completely in the now. So you wanna think about that. And so there is a benefit to having a challenging pose, a new pose, a forgotten pose. It does help you bring you back to this place right here, right now, not the past, not the future. And it also opens our pose vocabulary. I talk about uh, pose vocabulary with some of my students, meaning that our repertoire of poses that we can access, and for me, I access them for um, self-healing. Say your lower back is sore, I'm gonna access from my toolbox certain poses, breath, um, and then the next piece is I'm gonna change the patterns of my life. So the same scars or habits that created the back problems. So without further ado, we're gonna to come to the mat. We'll do a little bit of warm up and then we will play the yoga game and see which poses we're gonna have. Coming to the floor. And I'm gonna bring my bum as close to my heels as possible and then line my back down, arms by your side, palms turned up. Today we'll start with our arms low 45. So I'm keeping the arms in pretty close, palms are turned up. And I notice that my back wants to open up, so I'm gonna widen whew, the angle that my arms are at. It's almost like the arms of a clock. And just pause. Can you find that sensation of settling or surrender within your bones and your skin and your flesh? Take a big breath in. Hold it, exhale through the nose, back body to the floor. Inhale, big breath in. Exhale. Big breath in. Exhale. Big breath in. Exhale. Are you able to let go of more and more tension in the back of your body, the unseen part of the body? Walking your feet as wide as the mat. Let's take our arms down to a T. And how does the breath move through the body when you rearrange it in a wider stance? 
Inhale through the nose. Exhale, back body to the floor, all the way down the spine, lower back, hips, tailbone, all press down and heavy. Belly flesh falls towards the spine on the front of your body. Inhale. Exhale. Now let's take our arms into cactus. Three breaths here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last breath. Take the soles of the feet together. Lining up the toes, the pads, the heels, and let the knees fall open. Recline goddess. Two more breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Close the legs. Thighs are together, but walk the feet as wide as the mat. So now we're internally rotating the hips. Um, I personally feel this more in my non-dominant hips, super tight. Your thighs and knees are lined up. And I can stay in goddess or biceps beside your ears, palms turned up. Just don't let the belly pop. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. Let's leave the legs where they are and come back to God. cactus arms. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. And one last time in Goddess. Feet together, knees wide, externally rotating the hips. So the lower half of the body is in bound angle or cobbler. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two, exhale, close the legs, knees to chest, as tight as you can, little bow. And use the floor and the hardest this floor to massage your lower back. Possibly, if it feels better, hands behind the thighs, drawing the legs in. You decide what feels better. I'm gonna take my knees to the floor on the left, double leg spinal twist, right arm opens to a T. And let's pause here for a moment. Notice any tugging or resistance. That's your body telling you that maybe you need to take a look at your habits that created that tightness. And I see a lot of memes lately saying that we have to take responsibility for the piece that we play in our own piece. So P-I-E-C-E, -E, that piece that we play in our own P-E-A-C-E -E piece. Um, unfortunately, we're trained to blame externally over and over and over why things in our lives aren't the way they are but everything about our adult life staying in that life is a choice if it's not what you want we live in a country that affords you the luxury of making choices knees to the right left arm open to a t and it might take time to actualize the change maybe you want to go back to school maybe you want to live in a different neighborhood maybe you want to fix a fence between you and the neighbor who knows Two more breaths, big breath in, exhale, inhale two, exhale back to center, little bow. Now I'm going to draw my right leg in, left leg extends, pause, and maybe you're pointing and flexing here, fan the toes. Finally, left hand takes right knee over, single leg spinal twist. Back to center, little boat. Left leg in, right leg extends, point and flex. Right hand takes left knee over, single leg spinal twist. So funnily enough, the response I get from you guys about the gentle classes, in particular maybe Monday's class, everyone seems to like those super gentle classes the best, but I always worry that I'm not challenging you physically enough. So interesting feedback. I'm gonna do some egg beaters. 
And let's take those knees wide. You're either holding behind the knees, ankles dangle, or consciously pressing open turned on hands, hasabandha, against the inner knees. Two more breaths, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, coming in to set up for happy baby. Hands behind the knees or behind the thighs, pulling those knees towards the armpits. Feet are relaxed, and then eventually they can be flexed and possibly coming into full happy baby. Soles of the feet together. And maybe you pull those feet a little closer to you. Knees press away. Finally, releasing your feet back into cobbler, arms into cactus, reclined goddess. Close your legs, feet in the air, and let's do dangling legs up the wall without a block. Five breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Inhale, four. Exhale. Inhale, five. Exhale. Legs fall wide. Five breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Option to make it a little more intense. You can flex the feet. You can hold the inner knees. Some of you are going to grab the big toes. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Inhale, four. Exhale. And inhale, five. Exhale. Close the legs. Let's bring knees to chest. We'll fun finish with shoelace. Right over left. Grabbing the opposite knees, ankles, whatever you can grab, and flex those feet. Three breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Inhale, four. Exhale. Inhale, five. Exhale, shake it out. Switch. Left over right. Flex. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale, inhale three, exhale, inhale four, exhale, nice work, keep going, inhale five, exhale, inhale six, oh, <laughs> exhale, I was not present enough, and I want you to roll on your side, take a little breath on your side in fetal position sensation of completely letting go just before you go to sleep and then coming upright and let's come into a quickie child's pose spread those fingers in extended child's pose pressing chest towards your thighs attempting to bring bum towards your heels and then come back up okay Let's play our yoga game. Green. Oh, I love this pose. We never do this pose. It's a side reclining leg lift. When I first learned this pose, I was in a dance class at York in the theater program, and I did not belong. I was not a traditional dancer, blah, blah, blah. But I love the yoga that that teacher introduced me to, and that would be my very first yoga class, probably when I was about 18. I'm gonna bring my, I'm gonna come on my right side, doesn't matter what side you start with. Head is supported by your hand, almost like a little tripod. Hips are stacked, 
Everything's stacked and open. It's almost like you're in mountain pose on your side. Right blade flexes, presses into the floor. Left leg comes up and then we're gonna kind of cheat here because normally I don't want you to externally rotate this leg, but for this hand, reclining hand to toe, I'm gonna grab my left foot. Some of us, if this is tight, you might bring the knee in. You might come behind the leg. You might extend, you might not. Everyone's gonna have a different version. I can feel this in my hip. And let's just take two breaths. Inhale one, exhale. And sometimes you see um, Shiva and other gods in Hindu culture in this reclined pose. Inhale two, exhale. I'm gonna to come to the other side. This reminds me we're gonna do a, a leg class tomorrow. Grab that foot. Nice. Three breaths. Inhale one. Oh, this side feels much easier today. Exhale. Inhale two. Now you can choose to try to stretch this or you can just grab the toe or you can grab behind the leg. Inhale three. Exhale, come all the way back up. Nice, that is an old friend. It's funny how we revisit. Okay, next color. Random, so I'll take red. Woo, extended side angle. You can't see this unless we're on your big computer, but I love this pose too. We're gonna come up, right foot forward, left foot pivot so that I can have some stability. Right knee's gonna bend. And I'm going to bring right hand on the inside, or I like this variation better. I'm going to bring my forearm of my right arm to my right thigh. Arm is in line with my ear, palm down. Option to look up, option to take hands to the base of the skull and come back up. To do the other side, I'm going to stand up, pivot, left foot forward, left knee bend, right foot anchors, left arm, and right bicep over my ear, palm like I'm petting someone on the head. Option to stay here, or hand base of my skull, look up. And there's a bit of an upper spine twist there. What is next? Green again. Boom, child's pose. Okay, this is nice. Child's pose is often used as a resting pose. Um, it's a meditative pose. It's one of the few poses where you go in instead of uh, energy outward. So you're going to choose which child's pose works for you. Stack fist. I like wide leg extended child's pose. Two more breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Awesome. What's the next one? Wild card, maybe I'll do blue. Oh, reverse prayer. And so you have a choice. When we do this reverse prayer, you can do it from seated position, but I prefer from thunderbolt. So knees are bent, toes are tucked, it's totally optional. Hands, so I'll show you from behind. Hands are either resting on your lower back, fingertips touching is the next level, or, oh, how tight am I today? Can I bring the palms together, belly engaged, head stacked? Oh, so I can feel the super tight in my shoulders. Another variation would be take the strap, you're folding it in half, and you're just gonna come behind. Or hold your forearms. Nice. Reverse prayer is really good for opening the chest. Uh, sometimes I'll even grab the back of my chair and press the chest forward. <laughs> Wild card again. Let's do red. Tree pose. Very first yoga pose I ever learned. You have a choice, wall or no wall. Small experience or take it to the full tree. <laughs> These tights are so slippery, I'm going to keep it small today. So, I'm going to start with left foot. Right foot comes inside, whether it's ankle, calf, inner knee, inner thigh, open. Who cares how high this is? You want the hips squared off and the focus. Two breaths. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. And exhale, release. Always want balance, we're gonna do the other side. Right foot lands, left foot inside. 
two breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale, release. And one of the poses today might resonate with you, so you may do it a few more times on your own. Green. Fish. We've been doing this a lot lately. Anything that opens the heart benefits the back, benefits the respiratory system. So I'm going to come into Dandasana staff pose. Your choice. Hands are behind you, puffing up the chest. Or you're on the forearms, puffing up the chest or coming into full fish. Let's take two breaths. Inhale one, head is only dangling if it feels good in your neck. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale, chin to chest to help yourself out. And I did not do a very deep fish because I did not prep my body for that back bend. Green. Head to knee. So this is also one of my favorite early yoga poses um, for a lot of people doing a double leg forward bend is too much for the hamstrings so when we take one leg out of the equation I'm going to take right foot into left thigh instead of squaring to the middle of this V I'm going to square off to this left leg sitting up tall in the chest you're either staring at the toe you might use a strap or you might interlace your hands. Whichever way you're doing it, you want the spine not dropping the upper back, so we don't want that hunchback. And I want you to stare forward so that the neck continues to be in line with the spine. Two breaths. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. Switch. Right leg out, left leg in. You may have one side and prefer more than the other. Sitting up nice and straight. Stand up tall in the chest, hinge, oh, this side is way tighter. Inhale one, exhale. Inhale two, exhale, come on up. So the kittens are now four weeks old, and if you know anyone looking to adopt, the mother is a beautiful tortoiseshell tabby, gorgeous green eyes. She'll be available mid-July probably, and the kittens uh, will probably be available mid-June. Uh, two tabby with white. They're gorgeous. They look just like the mother. And a beautiful smoky tabby male. Okay, another wild card. I'm going to do blue. Butterfly. We call this bound angle. We call it cobbler. Um, uh, some people call it butterfly because it's a more of a visual. We're going to take the soles of the feet together and I either walk my bum in or I bring the heels towards me. <clears throat> Initially, I'm going to line up those soles of the feet. I like to bind my hands around the, the feet to keep them together and the knees go down. I can see that one, my dominant hip is usually higher than my non-dominant. So I might take my hand and gently guide a little stretch. I might do the other side. Some people can even bring their, do a tiny forward fold and their elbows press the calves down. I want you to be gentle with your body. In gymnastics, sometimes martial arts, wherever you see them doing this, uh, maybe a little, but I don't feel that rushed movement is going to achieve what they're looking for, open hips. I like a gentle one, two. Remember, if butterfly is too much, you're sitting upright, you might open your feet, trying to open that book, or you might turn it to diamond. Wild card, let's do red. Ooh, triangle. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. And this is where I think a lot of people didn't like the getting up and down of the game the last time we did it. But I think it's good for us. Right foot, so I'm coming into mountain, the back of my mat. Right foot forward, not pivoting the feet. You're widening the stance, both toes pointing forward. If it's too much, you can pivot a little, but right away you've lost the, the hip stability. I'm going to come into warrior two arms, reach out, palms forward, and traditional triangle is a cord in, hands are flecked, dangling. That's a tall order. If I want it to be more friendly in my body, I might take a block to the inner foot, palm to the block, left arm open and stack there. Look, it's a better triangle. Some people use the floor. 
Some people don't agree with using the floor. Arm stack, sh shoulder back, look at the ceiling, bend the knee to come up, and let's pivot and do the other side. Feet are gonna go to, this time you're pointing left forward. That's not as straight as I like, but that's my hip. Warrior two, palms forward, dangle, or block, open and stack, or floor. Everyone's gonna have a different variation and come on out. A nice counter pose is a squat. How does that feel? Okay, we're gonna do a couple more. I don't know about you, but it was so cold this morning that it was such a nice thing to do all these poses and wake up. Blue, oh my gosh. So in this pose, they're calling plank pose and actually we call that half plank. So I'm gonna leave it up to you. Plank, half plank, or reverse plank if you like. I'm gonna do reverse plank because I like to work on my upper body. And that's something that a lot of you have been discussing with me, how much more we wanna work on the upper body strength. So palms on the shoulders, feet are one fist width apart, up, head in line, spine, two breaths. Inhale one, or regular plank. Exhale, inhale two, exhale down. Maybe you chose half plank or green, cobra. I tell this story all the time. Look how extreme this cobra is. That was a cobra I did for years. It is not good for the discs of the back. It's too much. So, and that's relying on my arms to create the pose. So this is the one I did for years. Well, that's not normal. I'd rather you use your muscular effort. Palms beside your chest, elbows hug in, feet are untucked, engage the core and lift. I'm not pushing to the floor, so you'll notice my cobra is much smaller, but it's honest within your body. And a counter pose is pressing back into child's pose. Nice. Green. Camel. I think we did this last hump day. Camel is not a pose you would normally throw into the middle of a random class. It is a huge back bend. Um, so two ways, I can either bring my hands one, two, one of my teachers used to call it finding my wallet, knees together, engage the core. And maybe I'm gonna stay here. Maybe I'm gonna go a little further back. Maybe I'm gonna tuck my feet and grab the heels. Maybe you're gonna put blocks there and go back. Maybe you're gonna do half camel, but whatever you do, you're engaging the glutes to protect the tailbone. Let's do two more. Wild card, I'll do red. Warrior one. Everyone seems to love the warrior series in this class. So, coming into mountain. Right foot forward, I'm gonna show you two variations. The most honest variation that my teacher used to prefer is leave that left leg, don't pivot it in. Literally, I'm just lifting up the back of my foot, right knee squares off, warrior one arms. Another variation, I'll do it on the other side, I'm gonna just pivot. Left knee squares off, right foot turns. This is the more Western stable version chest and torso forward and come into warrior one. So you decide which one works better in your hip, your knee. We'll do one more green. Oh, Marici's pose three. So Marici's pose three is with one extended leg. Quite often we do it as a series where you get to decide where that other leg goes. So legs extended. Let's do right over left, bum and hips are squared off, and it's your choice. The foot can be by the calf or pull it all the way in. I'm gonna do, because the right leg's over, I'm gonna hug with the right arm, actually I'm gonna bring it in, left arm behind me, sit up straight, twist. Everything's in line with the center line. Counter twist, release and shake it out. Let's do the other side just to finish this balance piece of both sides, symmetry. Left over right. Left hand inside, twist, counter twist, 
And you might see this version, this version, hugging, and come on out. Nice work. We're going to come to our final reading to give you something to leave your day with. I don't know about you, but I'm just getting so excited about spring. This is kind of a downer. <clears throat> Let's go to Wisdom for Healing because I enjoy the gardening. I heard Costco has some of their gardening stuff already. Observe your attitude. Woo! Love the graphic. It looks like a Japanese woman looking at a floral version of her shadow. That's pretty. So spring comes a time when we have rituals. Some people, a ritual might be to go to High Park and look at um, cherry blossoms. Maybe you go to garden shows. What is your spring ritual? Today's lesson, determine whether you spend most of your energy in a positive or negative frame of mind. Do you have to remind yourself to be positive or are you naturally that way? Your goal is to become more mindful of whether you're unconsciously positive or negative. And the truth hurts, so it would not hurt for you to ask a spouse, a friend, um, I don't, you don't have to do a Facebook poll. Um, thank you so much for your effort. The good in me sees the good in you. Namaste.